The year is 1939. Germany had invaded and successfully occupied Czechoslovakia, with Italy invading Albania. Hitler announces the Anglo-German Naval Agreement and the German-Polish Non-Aggression Pact, as German troops continued to mobilise to the Polish border. Europe was staring down the barrel of yet another war. So what does Britain do? We make motivational posters. Take that, Hitler. In June and July of 1939, the Ministry of Information designed three motivational posters intended to be used to strengthen morale during bombing raids and times of war. The Second World War had yet to kick off, which wouldn't happen until the 1st of September, but raids and bombings were expected to happen as soon as war broke out. The painter and illustrator Ernest Charles Wall Cousins was credited as the designer of the posters, best known for his work for the London Underground in the 1920s, painting royal occasions, Winston Churchill portraits and for having the most British name ever. Plans for the posters were started in April and finally approved by the Home Secretary in early August. The posters needed to be ready to be put up within 24 hours of the outbreak of war, so printing began on the 23rd of August. By this point, it's well known that Winston Churchill had time and time again warned about Hitler's intentions following the annexation of Austria in 1938, and again with the invasion of Czechoslovakia later that year. But then Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain had a more softly softly approach, and even signed the Munich Agreement which handed over a region of Czechoslovakia to Hitler, which to Churchill was seen as an outright defeat. This had not avoided the outbreak of a new world war, but did buy the UK some more time. Air raid sirens and shuttles were being set up in the late 30s by the Air Raid Warden Service. But even with all of this happening prior to the start of the war and the air raid preparation, the UK was grossly underprepared to take on Germany. And despite what you might think, a few motivational posters would do little to stop the German war machine. That was a lot of serious preamble for a daft poster design, so the posters. The Your Courage and Freedom posters were widely distributed, but the response from the British public was very negative. They were seen as being condescending and useless, especially when German bombs could be falling from the sky at any moment. Defend it with all your might. Surely that's your job, Neville. The 2.5 million Keep Calm and Carry On posters were instead placed in storage, intended to be used only after serious air raids. They remained there until April 1940, as they were pulped due to a paper salvage campaign, so most of them were never even used. A few posters did see the light of day, but they were apparently unauthorised and very limited. But the German air raids never happened. Yet. A period of limited fighting between the 1st of September 1939 and the 10th of May 1940 was known as the Phony War, which ended with the German invasion of France, Luxembourg, Belgium and the Netherlands. The German air raids would not ramp up until the summer of 1940, but by this point the majority of the Keep Calm posters were completely destroyed. So how did a rarely seen, obscure World War II propaganda poster that was never properly used become this? In the year 2000, in the distant land of Anak in Northumberland, a couple who owned a bookshop called Barter Books found one of the original posters in a box of second-hand books that they purchased at auction. After hanging it on the wall of the shop, it started to gain attention from customers, so the co-owner, Stuart Manley, started producing copies. He actually sold copies behind his wife's back, as she didn't want to see the design commercialised. Oh Mary Manley, how right you were. Apparently it was featured on the Christmas gift idea list from The Guardian in 2005, which brought the poster into the mainstream. But things didn't kick off just yet. In 2007, the website keepcalmandcarryon.com was a launch that sold merchandise, featuring all the landfill you would expect from an online website. Then in 2009, following the global economic crisis, the phrase saw a huge resurgence in popularity. A phrase less relevant for times of war, but much more relevant when things are looking a bit grim. And in 2009, Welsh band Stereophonics used the phrase for one of their albums with a pretty decent album cover. Shame I couldn't say the same thing about the actual album. Plus, Nectar launched a campaign with the phrase Keep Calm and Carry One the following year. But as for parodies of the original phrase, the first site to sell spoof designs would appear to be threadless, with their design saying, Now panic and freak out. From this point on, the internet does what it does best, which is beat a dead horse into the ground. So there wasn't this one moment that caused the poster to explode into popularity, but instead it all started in 2005, and by 2009, the mainstream had well and truly gotten hold of this design. The original World War II poster campaign was seen as a failure, but despite the initial negative reception to the three posters during the war, this phrase has stood the test of time. The phrase was seen as being the personification of the plucky Brit, the stiff upper lip mentality associated with British stoicism, all wrapped up in a tidy five word phrase with a timeless design. This looks like a poster that could have been made at any time in the last 200 years or so. It doesn't hurt that the poster is easy to reproduce due to its simplicity. And because of its simplicity, we saw tons and tons of these generators where it was easy to make your own designs. With a phrase this relatable and universal, it could be applied time and time again. But what started as a piece of World War II nostalgia became so overexposed it transformed into an international commercial enterprise. I wish the story ended there, but greed and an ugly trademark dispute are also part of the story. 
In 2011, a company by the name of Keep Calm and Carry On Limited, real original name there lads, registered the slogan for trademark in the US and EU, doing so after failing to register the trademark in the UK. The company, owned by a bloke called Mark Coop, issued takedown requests against sellers of the Keep Calm and Carry On products. The trademark was obviously questioned by the likes of Barter Books, as the slogan had already been widely distributed. So an application was submitted to cancel the registration. This was rejected, so this new company would now own all the rights in EU countries. I think Mr. Wall Cousins would have something to say about this. According to Mark Coop, he didn't expect such a backlash to his attempt to trademark the phrase. And according to him, the whole legal fight had made the whole venture not worth it. Good. But by this point in 2013, the interest in Keep Calm and Carry On had already reached its peak and was on a very, very steep decline. The original phrase was now oversaturated and the parodies weren't even funny. Stuart Manley summed up the whole situation very nicely, saying, he's a smart chap, no ethics, but smart. Today this poster is known more for being a meme due to its limited usage in the Second World War. And it's not the representation of Britain's resolve during the war like many believe it to be. It's unfortunate that such a design became commercialised so quickly. It could have been used in a similar way to the Che Guevara image or the Obama Hope poster, a piece of design that becomes a symbol, able to transcend language and understood universally. Similar to the 2008 recession, the poster did see some resurgence during the pandemic, which is kind of what the original poster was made for. The British press may trot this phrase out every here and there, but its time in the sun is well and truly past. Sadly, it's now remembered as a prime example of how greed and oversaturation can kill an otherwise timeless, iconic design. If only we'd listened to Mary. Mary.